everybody! Today we're going to be doing arithmetic operations focusing on fractions. So to start off, we're going to begin by reading a short summary of what fractions actually are and what we should be doing if we ever come across one in our questions. A fraction, much like a decimal, is a form of expressing non-whole numbers. The fraction consists of a numerator sitting at the top of a denominator and separated by a fraction bar. As you can see, the numerator is on top and the denominator is on the bottom. An improper fraction is when the numerator is larger than the denominator. A proper fraction is when the numerator is smaller than the denominator. An improper fraction can be converted to a proper fraction through division. So let's break down this description. A fraction is any number that's divided by a whole number. So if we divided 1 by 4, the fraction would be 1 over 4 with 1 being the numerator and 4 being the denominator. I'll show you once again. If it was 2 divided by 5, then 2 would be at the top as the numerator, and 5 as the denominator. There are a couple of things that you need to know when you're solving fractions. First thing is, you can simplify fractions. This is a very important part in solving questions because a lot of answers will have a simplified form to them. An example of which is 6 over 30. We can't just leave 6 over 30 like this. You have to simplify it to something that we can both divide the numerator and the denominator by. So we can, for example, divide them both by 2. So 6 will become 3, because 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 30 will become 30 divided by 2, which is 15. Once again, we can simplify this by dividing by 3 on both sides, which then equals 1 as a numerator and 5 as a denominator, and then that becomes our simplified fraction. Another thing to note about fractions is that when you are adding or subtracting fractions, the denominator, which aforementioned is the bottom number, has to be the same. By this I mean, if you were, for example, trying to add 5 out of 10 plus 2 out of 4. In order to do this operation, firstly we need to make this the same denominator. By that, for example, we could time this by 2, and we'll also have to times the top by 2, and then we can times this by 5, and we can times the top by 5, and then we get 20 over 10 plus 20 over 10, which then equals 20 over 20, which equals 1. It's the same with subtraction. If you were subtracting perhaps 6 out of 10 minus 2 out of 20, we first have to change it so that the denominator is the same. So in this case, we could probably leave 10 alone. We could simplify this by dividing by 2, so it'll be 1, and 20 divided by 2 would be 10. And then, when we're subtracting or adding, the denominator stays the same, so it'll be 10. And then 6 minus 1 will be 5. Finally, when we're multiplying fractions, 1 out of 4 times 2 out of 3, unlike adding or subtracting, we just simply multiply it. So it will be 1 times 2, which is 2, and 4 times 3, which is 12. And then once again, we have to simplify. So we can divide both by 2. So then it becomes 1 over 6. Division is an interesting case. Fractions are already about dividing. So when you're dividing fractions, it sort of becomes like a whole inception of fractions. So then the first number goes on top, 1 of 6, and then 
1 out of 3. In order to solve this, we just multiply the topmost number, the bottommost number, and then we get 3 at the top and 6 at the bottom, which then we could simplify to 1 out of 3 by dividing by 3 on each side. So that's how you do a number of different operations using fractions. Finally, one more thing before we forget is how do we convert an improper fraction into a fraction? So an improper fraction, as Affa mentioned, will be something that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So a fraction like 7 out of 3 will be improper. In order to do this, all we need to do is divide 3 by 7. So we know we can do 2 into that. And the remainder, which would be 1, will go at the top, and the denominator will stay the same. Okay, I think we're ready to do some examples. Example 1. Harry owns red, silver, yellow, and blue marbles. One third of Harry's marbles are red. Of the remaining marbles, 5 out of 12 are silver, and there are an equal amount of yellow and blue marbles. If there are 14 yellow marbles, how many marbles does Harry have in total? So let's start off with red. We know red has one third of the marbles. That means we need to find the remaining marbles from the red. So if red has one third of the marbles, we can assume a 3 out of 3 would be how much Harry has in total, minus 1 third, which is how much red marbles there are. And we know when we minus fractions, the denominator is the same, and it becomes 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the remaining marbles will be 2 out of 3. And then, in order to find the silver marbles, out of 2 out of 3, we need to times 5 out of 12. When we do this, like we said, when we do multiplication of fractions, we just times the top and times the bottom together. So we know 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 12 is 36. And then we can simplify this by maybe dividing by 2 on each side, because we know they're both even numbers. And then we get 5 as a numerator and 18 as a denominator. So then the blue and yellow marbles would probably equal 18 out of 18 minus 1 out of 3 for the red minus 5 out of 18. So firstly, we need to convert the one third. So that will be 18 out of 18, which is how many marbles Harry had in total. Minus, we could probably times by 6 on the bottom, which will be 18 again. And then we'll add 6 on top, minus 5 out of 18. Once again, numerator stays the same. 18 minus 6, we can say, is 12. And 12 minus 5 would be 7. So blue and yellow marbles would be 7 out of 18. So we know that yellow is 14, and since the same number of yellow as blue, we know blue is also 14. Which also means that blue plus yellow is 14 plus 14, which equals 28. Therefore, 7 out of 18 equals 28. Now we need to figure out what 18 out of 18 is. This is very simple. What we can do is, in order to find 1 out of 18, we can essentially divide 28 by 7. So then we get 4. And then, in order to get the full number, we can times by 18. So if we 4 times 18, we get 18 times 4. That will be 32. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7, 72. So the answer is Harry has 72 marbles. Therefore, the answer would be B, 72. 
So that is all guys. I hope this helped in aiding you to solve fraction problems. And thank you all so much for listening. Good luck and bye.